الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نحن ما زلنا نتفيأ ظلال سيرة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم We're enjoying the shades of the seerah of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم On this beautiful Friday which is the 13th of Rabi'u al-Awwal 1434 of Hijrah And I was speaking to, a, we had a class, I mean, in the masjid last night. And I said, what did this mean, hijrah? The word ha, or itch, you find it. What does it mean? Every time we look at that calendar, we should really realize that we are 1,400 years, 34 years away from the hijrah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. But that hijrah is still alive in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. Hijrah didn't take place once in history and gun. No. Continues with us. It is a reminder, a reminder of the establishment of the first Muslim state on earth that was led by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and this hijrah was preceded with other hijras, immigrations or migrations. And one of these hijras is the migration of, prophet, of, of many of the Prophet's companions to Habasha. Among those was Abu Salama. Abu Salama. You know Abu Salama? one of the great companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he was married to Ummu Salama before she got married to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa even when she got married to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa her name didn't change continued to be Ummu Salama something that we've got to realize because the Salama is the son of Ummu Salama I think his name was Khalid and Ummu Salama radiyallahu anha so he migrated along with the Sahaba who migrated first to Habasha by the command of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And we have already talked about the quality of people who migrated. They were among the elite of Quraysh, of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they were persecuted in Mecca to a very severe level. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to give uh, a listen to the Qurayshis, to the whole world, that Islam is not confined to Mecca. Islam is not confined to the Arab Peninsula. Islam is a universal religion. And all of this globe belongs to Allah and to his religion, Islam. So he migrated among the people who migrated, along with his wife and children. They migrated to Abyssinia and spent some time. Uh, the news came, you know, propaganda. Quraysh sent some propaganda, some misinformation to Abyssinia, to Habasha, that things have changed in Mecca after Umar al Khattab declared that he became a Muslim and Islam went public. And you don't have to stay there. So some of the companions said, we want to go back to Mecca. We want to be close to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We want to learn from the fountain of Islam. Why should we stay here? We ran away from our religion here. If we can practice our religion in Mecca, why not? But by the time Abu Salama and his wife reached Mecca, they found out that the Prophet has already migrated to Medina. So... They have no stay in Mecca. Under the cover of night, of darkness, Abu Salama took his wife and his child, Salama, along with him to migrate to Medina. Hind bin Utba belonged to Bani Makhzum. I mean, Hind, his wife, Abu Salama, she belonged to Bani Makhzum. And he belonged to another tribe of Mecca. Salamatullah. And both tribes knew, I mean, spies, I mean, people collecting information, 
inform these two tribes that Abu Salama is in his way to Medina to follow his beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu If you want to catch them, you must run after them. So they caught them, caught them at the outskirts of Mecca. And look what happened. Now, uh, there is another lesson that we learn. Another form of sacrifice that we watch. Abu Salama radiallahu an, when he was about to leave along with his wife, both tribes came, you see, to him. And they said, we're not going to let you go. He said, by Allah, I'll go. I'll migrate, no matter what you do to me. They tried to force him, and he was ready to run away. His wife wanted to follow him, but her family said, no, we're not going to let you go. If your husband wants to go, it's up to him, but you are our daughter, and you're not going to leave. She begged them. She cried. She wept. They said, no. Look what happens now. Another trial for this poor woman who just came from a faraway land, running away for her religion, coming to her own family who persecute her, thinking that she would follow Prophet Muhammad What did they do? They said, we're not going to let you go. When her family took her away, the family of Abu Salama were watching. Said, but this son is not your son. He is our son. You see, the Jahiliya mentality. Okay? The pre-Islamic mentality. And they took the child. She was carrying the child and crying. She just lost her husband. Now she is about to lose her child. But they didn't really listen to her. Pleading, begging, please, this is my child. I'll take care of him. Said, no, your husband went. You are our daughter. And the other family said, you take your daughter, but we'll take our son. Until the child was really crying. So that the, woman, the mother was really, you know, when somebody was pulling from this side and somebody was pulling from that side, the woman said, Let go. Because she really, she didn't want to let her child go. But because of the mercy that she had in her heart, she didn't want her child to be mutilated in front of her. She didn't want her child to be tortured in front of her. So they took her child and her family took her away. Every day she used to come to this place and cry, weep for long hours. Hijra is not a game, Ikhwan. Hijra is sacrifice. Hijra is a period of history where the whole world changed. Ummu Salama, every day she used to come to this place and cry until she got tired of crying and she would go back. Until one day, after a long time, one person of Quraysh saw her said, what are you doing? And she explained what happened to her. He intervened to her family and to the family of her child to let this poor woman go and follow her husband. What are you doing to them? You're not benefiting. Her husband is not going to come back and she's not ready to come back to what you're doing. So let her go. She, so she was let going. She went and followed her husband in Medina. This is the family of Abu Salama. The family of Abu Salama. And this is their own sacrifice with the two hijra. And this is why there are people among the Sahaba, they call them Ashabul Hijratain, the people of two hijras, two migrations. Ashabu. This family of Abu Salama and Ummu Salama, who became later on Ummu al Mu'mineen, ajma'een, among the people who made migration twice once to Abyssinia, to Habasha, and the second to Medina. Ghafar Allah li wa lakum wa li muslimin ajma'een. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.